Hi there, welcome to VI Consulting Pro and welcome to this another episode of TP600 series. In this episode, we are going to talk about the data pipelines. As you know that Microsoft Fabric includes data factory capabilities and that also include creating of data pipelines, which we can use to orchestrate data ingestion as well as the data transformation. What all other activities are there? What are the core concepts, etc. You are going to get to know in this video. So if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about that. But before that, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon so that you always stay updated with our latest videos and updates. Now, enough all the talking, let's get started. First of all, you have to log in on your Microsoft Power BI service portal. Over there, we are going to choose data engineering as our experience. As you can see that I'm on my Power BI service portal. Over there, I'm into my workspace, which is Fabric. And at that left-hand side bottom corner, you can see the Power BI icon where if you are going to click, you are going to get the different experiences. After that, we are going to choose the data engineering because ETL is a part of data engineering where you can extract, transform, and load the data into a particular location that can be a data warehouse, database, or maybe just a data lake or data lake house. So this is how you can start working on it. Now, over here, I have to create one lake house. So you can see that lake house feature is it in preview. So click on this and here we are going to give it a name. It may take some time. So over here, you will find on your left hand side corner that there are tables and there are the files, but both are empty. Right now, there is nothing over here. What we are going to do, we are going to create first a pipeline and on your screen, now you can see that there is a new data pipeline. So just click on this and you are going to start creating a pipeline. In our previous videos, we have already learned how to start using a notebook, how to write a code, how to transform the data or analyze it. So there was a lot of that. If you haven't watched those videos, then I request you to please watch those videos. Those are going to help you a lot. All right, now click on this new data pipeline. So for our case, we are going to get the data from online. There is a CSV file in the GitHub and we are going to get the data from there. So if you want to get the data from online, then you can come over here and here you can select this generic protocol. Over here, we have the different options that you can choose. You can get the data from HTTP, ODATA, or maybe any other REST API that you would like to use for your organization. Over here, we are going to use HTTP. Next, and here we are going to create a new connection. I'm also going to provide you the URL in the description section if you would like to follow that and then you can do that. Also guys, please do remember that this is not a very special exercise. It's a very general introduction and in the exercise that you can take advantage to. I'm going to provide you this exercise link in the description section, which is based on Microsoft documentation so that you can start learning from there. All right. First of all, now we have to get a URL. So let me get it. So this is going to be my URL. Over here, you have to provide the different parameters. First of all, the URL, then you have to provide your connection. So keep it, uh, create a new connection only. Then you have a connection name. So please provide a unique name. And lastly, you have to also authenticate yourself. So this is uh, available for everyone. That is, it's publicly. So I'm going to say anonymous. Otherwise, you can also use the basic if you are using into your organization. All right, now I'm going to click next. Over here, we have to provide some of the connect to data source details. Relative URL, leave it blank. Request method is your API method. So what kind of API method you want to use, whether you want to get the data, you want to post the data, or you want to delete it something. In our case, we have to just get the data. So we are going to use the get method over here. So you have only two options over here, as you can see, get or post. So we are going to use the get. Additional headers, you can leave it blank, binary, let it be. Request timeout, max count, I don't think I don't think so. You have to fill them out, so you can leave them blank as it is. So on this page, basically, you have to just mention one, which is the requested method, and then click on the next button. On this page, now you have to select certain options. So as you can see that our file format is delimited because it's a CSV file comma is this one. And in this case, we are going to use this line feed. And that's all we have to do. And just click next. Over here on this page, you have two options. Select either one of your existing lake house, which is a fabric lake house, or create a new. So I'm going to select my existing that I just created. So we are going to use this. Over here, you are going to have two options. Either you want to load the data as a data table into the table, or you want to as a file. So we are going to say it's going to be file. And here we have to first provide the path. Over here, I'm going to give the folder path to new data and I'm going to give a file name to sales.csv and copy behavior is going to be done. Now let's go forward. Again, over here, you have to select the same option. So rather than row limiter would be line feed and then we have to go new. Here, it's going to connect your lake house with the file store, like where your file has been stored on the internet, where which we are going to use HTTP as a source. So now we are going to simply say save and run. 
now you have to wait for a couple of seconds and here you can see that your copy pipeline is available over here which is your copy data now you have the different settings over here you can change the name if you would like to you have the source settings which we have already defined your destination settings and every other settings have been defined over here guys please remember that this is very similar to the azure data factory if you have any question and concern regarding that i'll request you to watch our azure data engineering tutorial i'm going to provide a link in the description section also we have created one dedicated azure data factory tutorial that is going to help you to understand it how does actually it works now if you would like to check the status of this pipeline since we have already run while saving this file so what you can do you can simply click outside and here you can see that this has been succeeded and it has been run successfully our data our data has been now loaded into our fabric lake house now we have to go back to our demo pipeline lake house and let's see what we have over there so let's click on this and it's loading your data so now you can see i have this new data folder and under this you can see that my sales.csv file has been loaded now i'm going to create a new notebook from here so that we can do certain transformation of the data so first part has already been done that is extract now we are going to transform the data and then we are going to load it again so that's what is a data engineer's job to extract the data transform the data load the data which we call etl operation now i'm going to paste one code over here so again i'm going to provide this exercise link in the description section i'm going to explain you what this code is doing if you don't know python or PySpark, i'll request you to start learning it now this is going to help you a lot as a data engineer so please do learn it so our very first code is going to be simply this which is i'm saying i'm going to have a table which is my sales table which is already there so i'm going to run it very first time when you are trying to run it it may take some time because this has to get started and it has to create certain clusters nodes and as you can see at the bottom of the screen it's running the wait for cell now now apache session has been started it will take this time command executed it took this time so everything has been done i'm going to create a new code cell over here and where again i'm going to post another code so when i created a new cell you would can you are going to get this toggle parameter cell so we are going to turn it on and here now we can start pasting our code so this script is going to be used to transform the data what we are doing here first we are just reading the data from the files that we have loaded over here through the pipeline then we are going to add a new month and year column after that we are driving a new column with the first name and last name then we are filtering out the data and lastly we are loading into a new table name table underscore name so let's run this one and see what happens over here now you can see that our job has been succeeded and our data has been loaded so if i'll come over here i'm going to refresh it and i should find a table over here which is over here name sales so let's see let it get load and you can see that our sales table is over there basically we just append the data over there so if i'll just go here and let me go there and see the data so if you want to display the data you can simply do similar to this and you will see the data over here so this is your data we have month here column we have first name last name and then we have other sort of the columns that you would like to see over here so in this transformation we created one month and year column also first name and last name column and after that we simply loaded the data into a sales table which you can see over here over here what we have to do we have to rename this notebook that we have just created and i'm going to say sales data that's going to be my notebook if you want to give any name you can do that too and if you would like to further end also do anything else you can do over here but we have to simply limit over here so just rename this one so now this is our sales data notebook now since you have created a notebook and you know what your code is going to do and how you are trying to modify the data or let's say transform the data now you can incorporate this code into your pipeline that means in the pipeline itself we can add your notebook over there so let's go there into the pipeline and try to modify the pipeline now So this is my pipeline over here you can see on my left hand side panel this is my ingest sales data and over here we are going to use this script now you have to simply come under the activity step over here you are going to select this and we have to delete the data so let's do over here now we have to connect these two so now you can see that these have been connected we have to rename this and we are going to say simply delete delete all files that's going to be the name of this one if we are going to go under source we have to modify certain settings over here first we have to select the workspace then we have to select our lake house which is going to be the demo pipeline that we have just created over here after that we have to define the file path type over here we are going to select this option wildcard file path so click on this one here we have to mention our file path which is going to be the files under files we have a new data folder and then we have to mention the file name which again we are going to simply say dot csv if there is a file with the same name it's going to delete them or you can simply browse as well so click on browse button and there you will find your sales file so that you don't have any path problem so you can do that 
Right now I have selected only one file, but if you have multiple, then you can simply select star.csv. That's all you can do that over there. Now we have to go to the login settings we don't want, so simply unselect this one. That's all you need to do. So this is first done for the delete data. First we are deleting all the data, then we are copying the data. Then now we have to add another activity where we have to add a notebook. So here you can see this notebook activity we are going to add over here. So that means once we have the data, first we are cleaning up everything, then we are loading the data. Now we have to transform the data. For that again, you have to connect this with this. Here we have to again define certain name settings, etc. So let's do that quickly. So first I'm going to say load sales notebook load sales notebook that's going to be its name now we have to go under settings and under settings we have to provide our notebook name which is going to be our sales data notebook that's all we need to do and in the parameters if i'll come over here you can create a parameter here is going to be table underscore name first then type is going to be the string and then value is going to be the new sales so let's type new sales that's all you need to do now. So the, the table underscore name parameter will be passed to the notebook and override the default value assigned to the table underscore name value in the parameter set. That's what you need to do. Now we are going to go to the home page and we are going to save this one. So let's save. So what we have done over here, first of all, we have deleted all the data that we have. Then we have to copy the data into our lake house and then we created a notebook where we have transformed the data and now this data and this notebook activity we are using again over here to transform the data. Now simply you need to click on this button which is run and let's see how it happens and we are going to see in the output activities it's been queued over here let's wait and we can even refresh it and here you can see that delete all file has been succeeded now it's going to go on this one you can also see this clock mark that means this one is in the operation now let's refresh it again and this one has been completed now we are simply running this notebook and let's see what happens over there so i'm going to again refresh it it's still running Maybe it's looking for a parameter. All right, let's try to refresh again. It's taking a lot of time though. And now you can see that all the three activities have been succeeded successfully. Now, as you can see on your screen, you have run the whole pipeline. There, first you have deleted all the data that you had previously, that means your staging stage. Then you have loaded the data. And after that, you have run the transformation on the data and load it again. So that's what we have done in this activity. Now let's go back and see whether our data has been loaded successfully or not. Here we can see that, okay, everything has been done fine, but we have to check our data too. So I'm going to go back into my demo pipelines. And here, this is my table, which has been created and it's loading the preview. So let's see. It should have our year and month column, also first name and last name column. So it's taking some time. So let's see. And here you can see that your first name, last name, year and month, and also the rest of the data is over there. So this is how you can ingest data with a pipeline in Microsoft Fabric. I hope you enjoyed the video and you also learned what are the data pipelines, how we can use that. But in case you have any question and concern, please do let me know in the comment section. Also, if you're looking for any of the training programs, career guidance or consulting, please don't forget to connect with us. Till then, keep learning and I'm going to see you in the next video.